Hello, ghouls and gals. Welcome back to Cafe Crashdown. I am Kayla here at the Crash Hub, and we are talking about Boom, episode three of the new season of Doctor Who. Let those credits roll. Hey, my friends, welcome back to Cafe Crashdown. Again, I am Kayla, this is the Crash Hub, and we talk about all things horror and sci-fi here. So if you like talking Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you like talking Dune, and I hope if you like talking Doctor Who, then you have definitely come to the right place. So today we are talking about episode three titled Boom, written by the very well-known Stephen Moffat. Some of you are like, who is Stephen Moffat? Well, let me tell you. He is the writer of the 11th and the 12th Doctor, their years. So that, I think that started in 2010. Definitely had a really great and very successful run. A lot of really great storylines and character arcs for our Doctors, uh, the companions that were with them. A lot of very iconic episodes. So I was very excited to hear that he was coming back and he was doing this episode. Curious to see if he's gonna do any other ones that might have been announced. So let me know in the comments if you happen to know if he's gonna be doing any more. And I'm excited to talk about today's episode because it's so different from the other two that we've gotten. Actually, the other three, if you're including the holiday special, which I I think I understand what they're trying to do here because they're trying to bring in this new audience. And so they're, you know, having fun, kind of playing, adding a couple of these little intense things here and there with the maestro and the toy maker and all of that stuff, adding some mystery in with Ruby and who's her parents kind of a thing. So I think that they've been like slowly trying to like pull some of these new people in. But now with this episode with Boom, I felt like we were getting back to the roots and getting back to, it just felt like Doctor Who to me. So I was really excited to see this episode. I keep saying excited, but I was. I, <laughs> I was definitely looking forward to this episode in general because of Steven, but after watching it, I'm, needless to say, I'm pretty happy with it, but let's dive in. So we show up on a brand new planet, which I am all about. This is Ruby's first time on a brand new planet besides Earth. She's definitely traveled in time, but she has not been on a different planet. So this is a whole new experience for her, which is always a very um, heartwarming and exciting time, not only for us as the viewers experiencing that again with Ruby, but also the doctor. That's like one of his things. He loves that. He loves, he loves showing off. He loves taking people around and showing off this beautiful, incredible universe. So uh, the way that this episode starts, we're in this like war zone type area. You've got fog everywhere and you've got these guys that are walking. They look like soldiers. Yes, my cats are back. They are taking over the set. It is fine. We're just gonna roll with it. So we have the soldiers, they are going through the fog. It is looking murky. I was trying to figure out, I saw that, you know, they had like the, um, like priest collar. So it's like, oh, these are these are like religious people. It's like a priest or something. He's like going, is he giving like last rites to people? I was kind of confused. They're doing the cool like calling thing with like their cheek or whatever to like, he was like phoning his daughter being like, hey, you gotta, you gotta brush your teeth. Make sure you do that kind of thing. So um, that was cute. So we get this establishment of he's a father and you know he's trying to look after his daughter while he's in this war zone i guess doing his job so you know painting the picture of that his daughter they have a camp on this planet somewhere not too far from where they are um you know and he's just out doing his his shift right or his runs we also find out that he's apparently temporarily blind which it seems that something must have happened where he got injured in the face this could have been said in the episode i i might have missed it but needless to say he is temporarily blind he's not permanently blind not that that would really matter if he was permanently blind but apparently it matters to this planet or these ai that are on this planet because we get these ambulances that are coming which when they said that i was like ambulance so you have these AI that are like scooting along and they come and they check up on them. They're already like horrified with them seeing them, um, with the ambulances seeing them. So you already know that this is probably bad news bears. 
And then they get up and, you know, the AI like hooks into the dad, right? And they're like, oh, you're blind. Well, pff, we gotta kill you. And then they kill the guy. He gets zapped and his body gets in this little like disgusting can thing. And oh, it was just, it was gross. Ugh. So then you're wondering like, what the heck is this? What planet are they on? <laughs> what is going on? And of course, conveniently, the doctor and Ruby decide to land on this planet during this time, during this, what appears to be a war going on. So we do get the word that they are Anglicans. So that does then um, give confirmation that these are religious people that are on this planet and, you know, doing their service, whatever that may be. And they're afraid that these creatures that are attacking them and stuff on this planet, that they're in the fog attacking them. So we have Ruby and the doctor land. And so the doctor runs out and then he realizes where he's at. And he's like, he's scoping the room and he's saying, this is not good. Um, I need to make sure that this is okay where we're at before I let Ruby out. He's telling her to stay. Of course she doesn't hear him, but he runs off. He ends up stepping on a landmine, right? It's this little landmine thing and he just freezes. And so she's, Ruby's coming out. She's like, oh, this is so cool, da, 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 da. And he is singing over the sea to sky, which honestly, I, okay, I wouldn't have known had I not watched Outlander. So as soon as he was singing, I was like, oh yeah, over the sea to sky. I know that, yeah, yeah, Outlander, got it, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so he is singing this, which I guess is to have him focus and also kind of calm his blood pressure because we find out that with him stepping on this landmine, um, he, like any more movement and it's gonna go off, right? And so that also is due to like his blood pressure rising and stuff like that, that is also kind of shifting and adding to the weight and uh, distribution on the landmine and stuff like that. So this is not a good situation that we have the doctor in with him standing on one leg, balancing, not moving as much as he can on a landmine. So of course, Ruby has to try to figure out what to do and they're trying to at least figure out a way to distribute the weight, she finds our dear Anglican friend who happened to be the meat can. I don't really know. I don't know, urn, it's an urn, but it's like a meat can, you know, you know, rest in peace, uh, dude. Um, she ends up finding him and so she hands this body urn to the doctor and he right away, he knows what it is. And so he's trying to be like, do you want me to tell you? what this is or do you just do you not want to know and then he ends up telling her that it's a person it's a person that you're holding just fyi little mild freak out I would too because god that's intense we also get him mentioning the villain guard weapons manufacturer so he brings us up noticing this in regards to the technology especially like what he's standing on at the moment that this is part of the villain guard so I think he's already starting to piece together what is happening on this planet, which he usually is. He's always like 20 steps ahead of everybody else, just trying to scope the scene. And kind of all to, before she ends up handing him the urn, I think, I think this is more, I can't remember what part, but it, you know, she was, Ruby was supposed to be looking for something and she ends up getting like completely distracted by the planet. She's on a new planet. So she like sees the sky and she's seeing it. it's beautiful to her and it's beautiful to us as well. And it is so fitting, like that would really be it, right? It's like, yes, we're in a dire situation here, but man, like it's freaking gorgeous, you know? So she like, she takes a little too long, but it's okay, Ruby, we totally get it. One of the things that I thought was really funny was when, you know, they were trying to do the distribution of the urn to give to the doctor. So then that way he can, it has to be at the right time, right? So she has to be able to hand it to him at the right time to be able to, for him to reposition himself to where this thing's not gonna explode. And so he's communicating to her, like, just get out of here. Like, this is crazy for you to stay here. You're gonna die. Like, this is gonna explode. This is not good. I did not mean to bring you here and into the situation. And she's like, no, no, like, I'm here for you. Like, I'm in this. I'm a great companion is basically what she's saying. And she wants to be here for her friend during this time. And she sees, she has hope, right? She wants to help. And so he says this really funny line. I have to pull my phone for this because he said, you're brave 
and I forgive you for being incredibly stupid. <laughs> I thought that was great. That was so funny. It was <laughs> so good. You know, and then, so then he says, dance with me. And so they are like trying to figure out the timing in terms of when she should like pass the baton of the meat can basically to him. And uh, they end up succeeding. It was nerve wracking, but they end up succeeding. So kudos to that. So what we find out, I'm not going to go into like full details about this whole episode nitty gritty because again, you've already seen this. So, you know, I don't think I need to give you certain specifics, but what I really enjoyed about this episode was this theme of we have the villain guard weapons manufacturer, which is what the doctor brings up because he can tell from standing on the landmine uh, who created this and kind of he's already gauging the situation and kind of realizing what's going on here and this whole theme of war is business and he says that war is business war is money and how freaking relevant is that and how true is that when you really sit here and you think about it majority of these wars they're started for power for authority for money for land all of these selfish reasons, right? And it is a business. These weapons manufacturers thrive on war. They crave it, right? I think even the first Iron Man really touches on this. Um, it's not Iron Man himself because he gets really upset when he finds out that uh, the guy who like was taken over Tony Stark's place, I can't think of his name right now, but you know, he was selling weapons over into the Middle East. Kind of a thing with like the Stark name and stuff, and it was he, you know, he found his bombs. Like they had bombed these innocent villages and things like that, and so and that was the whole thing. It was a lucrative profit for Stark Industries, uh, so that's why they did it. So I really enjoyed really exploring this theme and um, adding this like really unique kind of like sci-fi touch to it. So we find out that the villain guard manufacturer weapons manufacturer they have this algorithm that they created with their ai and it's a business right so you're basically like creating fake wars and you've got death quotas that you have to meet so poor dad who he was just temporarily blind but when the ambulance was assessing him they were like oh you're blind sorry we're gonna have to cut you out you know and he's like but it's not like long term it's not fatal well it is if you know you're gonna make a we're gonna make a profit off of you. So it is what it is, dude. So we have some interesting characters. We have Mundy who she kind of got under my skin a little bit, but I also understand where she's coming from. So you have these Anglicans and they're religious and they're just trying to figure out this whole situation in this war. They're saying all of these creatures, we think they're coming from the fog and stuff like that. No, it's all fake, it's the AI get out of here, we've got to stop this. And what's really cool is AI itself was the one that ended up corrupting the villain guard AI, uh, dad AI, which is what I'm gonna call him, to uh, help out his daughter Splice and everybody there. He ends up getting into the system, channeling through the doctor and the ambulance, and he gets into there and he's able to put in a virus to completely corrupt the villain guard's AI algorithm which is really cool. I thought that was a really fun finish. So Splice was a character for me that oh, really just got under my skin, man. Like, come on, girl, get a grip. Like, I understand that's your dad and everything, but my God, she like, she saw, she heard her dad. So she's like trying to find him and stuff like that. And I understand the panic with that. Like, you just want your dad. So then she sees that when she's like running frantically towards Ruby and them, that the doctor's on a landmine. She is old enough to know what that is and what that will do and she's still acting crazy and then i had to laugh because when ai dad came and was like oh do you want to see some pictures and so then he puts up these pictures and she's sitting here in the corner just like oh oh my god like looking at these photos and then everyone else is like frantic because they realize that this landmine is going to eventually explode whether he keeps his you know stillness or not it's going to eventually explode and also with this being what he is, it's gonna like blow up this planet basically like in half. So it's even more dire than just like a small little aerial explosion. It's even worse than that. The other thing that we got from this episode was Ruby did end up getting injured and it was basically fatal. And so we thought that we lost her and 
part of the you know ambulance thing is you know they were hooked up to her and they're asking her her next of kin and it kept asking that i kept saying the next of kin the next of kin and you see ruby and she's like crying and she's like who's my next of kin who's my next of kin and it was really sad because man she just like she's not getting any answers that she wants and she's just like she's so lost and just longing for something something to hold on to regarding her her lineage her parentage So overall, I enjoyed this episode. I thought that it was good and that it felt like an old Doctor Who episode. And I really appreciated that. And I've missed that. I didn't realize how much I missed it until I saw this episode. So I enjoy the fun. I enjoy the quirk. But I also really enjoy these heartfelt episodes that are dealing with these themes of morality and exploring these things, especially regarding humanity and a lot of the things that we face every single day, right? And it, they always just do such a good job with that in the past that I think it's really important and that's what makes this show so special. So please, Russell T Davies, keep more of that, bring more of that. Thank you, Steven Moffat, for such a great episode. I definitely think it's going to be even better as a rewatch because when I first watched it there was just a lot of things going on that I was just trying to kind of keep up and kind of I was taking my notes and stuff like that. So I think this is going to be a really fun rewatch and I do hope that we get more episodes from Steven. But I would really love to know what you guys thought. So please leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Did you think the same thing? Did you did you totally pick up that this was like a Stephen Moffat episode? Um, were there any other Easter eggs that maybe you noticed that I totally missed? Um, what did you think of Splice? Um, and just the whole situation in general, this whole theme of war as business, war as money kind of a thing. So definitely leave me your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, please give me a like. Definitely subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you definitely don't miss any videos that I have coming out. I am working on other content besides Doctor Who. I promise uh, there, there is a lot going on right now, but I really want to do a recap and kind of talk about this new Dune Prophecy series that we are getting on Max. I have a lot of thoughts about it. so. I would love to talk to you guys and kind of get your thoughts on it. And then we have a lot of things going on in the horror realm with movies coming out, TV show things, Friday the 13th TV show. There's some drama with that, but also that's coming. So we have a lot of things to talk about. So definitely make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. So that way you can catch some of those videos coming up and I will see you next week. Thank you guys.